What is the scariest slash creepiest theory you know about? If the human body senses trauma it is unable to combat, it will switch off metabolism, pump endorphins, and slip into a pain-free dissociative state, in essence, shutting down. It's been seen in air crashes, and lots of places really. Basically your body can switch itself off. Don't some prey animals do this when they are caught? That's why they seem so unfazed about being eaten. I'm sure I've read something about rabbits not being likely to survive an encounter with a predator. Even if they escape cause their body is just pumped with so much shit they have a heart attack anyway. It was on reddit somewhere I saw it so who knows how legit it is. As someone that has pet rabbits. Not stressing them out if they are not feeling well is a legitimate concern for exactly this reason. It's such a delicate line between deciding if the stress of an urgent care visit is worth it or more detrimental. During the Challenger accident from 1986, whenever the shuttle exploded, the ground crews had the astronauts EKGs and vital scans. After the explosion, the astronauts were still alive. Theory has it that they were cognizant the entire time until they crashed in the ocean. This is what actually happened. NASA never wanted to admit that the astronauts didn't die in the explosion. But there is a major probability that they were not conscious when they crashed into the ocean. Didn't they also say that by the time they recovered them, the bodies were basically liquefied in the suits from all the exterior factors in the ocean? If you die by being beheaded the last thing you might see is your decapitated body. Time for me to go to bed. If you die by going to bed the last thing you could see is the inside of your eyelids. The Dark Forest Theory this explains the free me paradox, why we haven't seen any other advanced life forms despite the vastness of the universe. Other advanced life forms don't send out signals into the rest of the universe, because they're worried that something more advanced and dangerous is going to find them first. There's another idea that other civilizations know there's something out there, but don't send any signals, because it has no reason to not whip in at the entire planet. There's a science fiction book based on this, and I think this quote explains it better than I can. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path, and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful. Because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant a tottering old man, a fairy or demigod fears only one thing he can do, open fire and eliminate them. Our Dumbus is sent out a golden recording of Johnny B. Good blasting through space. Cosmology can be disturbing. For instance, I recently learned of dead end trips. There are some destinations that you shouldn't try for. It's possible to travel so far away from where you started that the expansion of the universe will exceed the speed you were traveling at. You can't return home. Because home is receding faster than you can travel. You can't reach your destination. Because it too is receding faster than you can travel. You can no longer get anywhere. Only get further away from everything. You cannot reach any destination. Even if you travel forever. Yes. This is because the universe is constantly expanding. And galaxies. Neighborhoods. Clusters etc. are gravity bound. They stick together in distant clumps, while other clumps move away. It's kind of like people in cars on a highway. You will remain a constant difference from however many people are in your car, or on your motorcycle, or in your school bus, but you will get further and further away from other vehicles. This means that if you are within a pocket that's bound by gravity, you'll always be an equal distance from everything else. But if you fall out of that car, you're not getting back in it, and you're almost certainly never getting into any other car either. Telling this story makes me feel uncomfortable, even today, so I will tell it here. I don't know how much this story fits into this thread, but I've never had a platform that seemed appropriate to share it. So here we go. When I was 20, 14 years ago, I moved from Iowa to Boulder, Colorado with my best friend Corey. We moved there during the month of August, and shortly thereafter I got a phone call from a number one didn't know. I answered it, and it turned out to be this girl that had attended the same high school as us, Ashley. Ashley had heard that Corey and I had just moved to Boulder, 
and she was calling because she, too, had just moved to Boulder to attend Cubic. She wanted to know if we wanted to get together sometime and hang out slash party. Ashley was a couple years younger than us, and we didn't run in the same crowds. So we didn't hang out much. But I remember her coming over to our apartment to smoke and chill once. Then I remember asking her to get us weed. She did. She came with us to a party once. And I also remember us asking her for weed a second time. And her texting me back saying you guys just message me when you want weed. So no. After that I don't think we talked to her again. Fast forward 3 to 4 years. Cory and I are living back in Iowa. One night. I was out with a couple of people I'd gone to high school with. And we went to this dive bar called Thumbs. In the back of Thumbs there is a single pool table. Which is where my group went. Because we had planned on playing. We got to the pool table. And there's Ashley. Racking a set of pool balls. I was super surprised to see her there. So I walked right up to her. And said something like Ashley. Long time no see. What are you doing here? Did you move back from? Boulder? Ashley just stared at me for a second. And then said what? So I repeat myself. And say did you move back from Colorado? I haven't seen you. Since we hung out in Boulder. She looked truly confused. And then she said um. What are you talking about? I never lived in Boulder. At this point I thought she was ducking with me, because I specifically remembered hanging out with her more than once. So I laughed, and was like you're ducking with me, right? She shook her head no, and one of the girls I was with, who knew both of us, actually overheard it, and butted in to confirm that Ashley had lived in our hometown the whole time. I completely dropped the subject to save face. But the experience was so unsettling that I made a beeline for the front door. I walked out onto the sidewalk, pulled my phone out of my pocket, and called Corey. I said Corey, do you remember when we lived together in Boulder and Ashley came over and hung out with us? And Corey said no man. That never happened. He was my best friend, so I knew he wasn't ducking with me. Plus there was a 0% chance he and Ashley had ever talked to set something like this up. When I pressed the issue, he insisted that no one we had gone to high school with had ever moved out to Boulder, and that we certainly hadn't hung out with them. Since then, I've brought this up to Corey several times and his position has never changed. To this day, I don't know what happened. I specifically remember hanging out with her. She wore a tie-dye t-shirt when she came over the first time, and we hung out with her multiple times. I remember it so clearly. I still have those memories. But apparently they never happened. Even though the timeline matches exactly, she would have graduated high school that year and moved to Colorado in August for school. I know that the human memory is super unreliable. And I'm sure that's all this is. But that doesn't change that I'm absolutely 100% ducking sure that this happened. 14 years later, and I still stand by my story, wrong as it may be. Not theory but fact. The average terminal velocity of a kindergartner is 60 miles per hour. That you might be aware of everything happening to you during surgery. The anesthesia keeps you from moving and causes you to forget. Yeah before my wisdom teeth removal the nurse told me that patients can still partially respond to the commands of the doctor while under anesthesia. They just don't remember this afterward. When I went under I didn't even remember falling asleep. The theory that scented candles starting getting poorer views at the same time COVID hit the US makes you wonder how many people have mild COVID before we even knew about it. Pairing the lack of taste and or smell as one of the main symptoms associated with mild COVID cases. Are you saying that Gwyneth Paltrow caused COVID? The one that bugs me was the one about the guy who was last seen in an airport. There's video of him just wigging the duck out and running away at full speed. They link the surveillance footage and you can see him run all the way off the premises. He was never seen again. There's lots of theories about what happened. None I wanna look too far into. Bulgaria wasn't it? Completely freaked out and ran through the front door into the woodlands. I saw a video about the theory of grey goop in which one day we invent macro robots used to break down waste but could somehow evolve to consume all carbon based organic matter. This would eventually lead to them consuming all life on earth. I was mildly freaked out by the idea of it. It'd be the most horrifying means of extinction.
It's scary that there are thousands of serial killers out there at any one given time who often just blend in with the rest of society and live normal lives. Many will never be caught. Basically heat exchange theory. That one day all of the heat we use in order to create energy will be expended and the universe will be stuck in a heat lock. I came into this thread unafraid of death. I'm leaving petrified. Thanks. Philosophical zombies. Theory that a good portion of the human race lack conscious experience. If you have ever dissociated or done something and don't recall, driven home but have no recollection. Your brain acting on autopilot, that's what they are like. They do everything required to be human. They ape emotions. Go through life. They just lack sentience. That mind control actually exists. It's something that would never go public because whoever was able to perfect it first would be in the position to use it on whoever is aware of its existence. More of a story than a theory, but it correlates to some of these and makes me think some could be real. When I was younger I had this little stuffed animal dog I named Rocky. One night, my younger sisters and I, who all slept in the same room so we could hang out together, were messing around. And I two handed overhead tossed Rocky into the wall directly in front of my bed. He hit the wall, slid down behind whatever was in front of my bed, and was never seen again. I immediately went to go get him, and he just wasn't anywhere. We tore the whole entire small room apart. We all saw the event occur. Over time the room has been completely emptied out. Everything in it rearranged. Walls painted. Everything and no Rocky. He just completely phased out of existence. Makes me think he glitched out of the system or something. That we have so little data about the deep dark parts of the ocean and don't truly know what lurks there. Sometimes I'll encounter random strangers that I get a strange vibe from. Like they're noticing me more. It's made me think. What if there are time traveling tourists just walking around. And I'm someone important. And they want to meet me before I do whatever it is I'm going to do. Apostrophe. Spontaneous combustion. I watched a strange but true episode about this as a child. And was convinced I'd randomly burst into flames one day. I'm over it now. But that was my top fear for a long time. I'm in a nursing home with dementia in 2060, and all I'm doing is reliving this moment of November 2020. That the universe is infinite and there could be billions of other living organisms that all know about us and have significantly better technology and could wipe us out at any moment but choose to leave us be because they know that we don't know about them. Kinda like some indigenous tribes that live secluded and don't know that we are this civilized and technologically advanced. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that this has already happened. Douglas Adams. The theory that we're all quantum immortals, and when someone dies in our reality for them, they just keep on going in a reality where they didn't. Sometime in the future, if we don't disappear before, humans will probably be able to bioengineer themselves to avoid death by old age. Most probably only the richest people will get this. Founding an immortal elite of dynasties that will be able to rule nations by themselves, while common people simply keep dying as always. Now almost everyone think of death as something normal and inevitable, as part of our nature. But then, in that apothetical future, death will be seen like a disease which cure it's kept away from common people by that ruling elite. That we can sense when someone is watching us. So when we are alone, and we get that feeling, someone is probably watching you. I had a professor in college who taught physics, and he explained why we will likely never come across aliens. The universe is about 14 billion years old. Over the course of that time, it's likely that intelligent life, besides life on Earth, has existed. However, 14 billion years is an insanely long time. Other life forms have probably risen and fallen thousands of times over. Extreme dynasties with technology we can only dream of having have probably existed. Life forms could have lasted hundreds of thousands of years and still not even be close to our timeline. The chances of other intelligent life forms existing at the same time as humans. In the 14 billion years the universe has hosted a possibility for life. 
is really unlikely, statistically, intelligent life to have formed, prospered, or even existed at the same time as humans is extremely small simply due to the absolute drop in a bucket that we are on terms of time. We may very well be completely alone in the universe. Some people have had some strange NDEs, near-death experiences. Going through websites cataloging them can be a trip. I'm willing to attribute some of them to brain damage and some as legit though I'll never be able to tell which is which. Deathbed visions give me a warmer sense of security. I can't imagine how peaceful it must be to die and see your deceased loved ones there to ensure you make it safely to the other side. The Gaian Bottleneck Theory Basically the reason we've never encountered or been contacted by aliens is because they are all dead. Every alien species that evolved to form advanced societies eventually outgrew their planet and destroyed themselves. Like we are. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments below.